hi, everybody. How are we all doing today on this wonderful Tuesday? Or whenever you're listening to this, welcome, hello, to the Wolf Den Podcast. Will. Bob. How are, how are we today? Oh, uh, I am doing fine. How, how are you, though? Have you, have you thrown up in any toilets recently? Have you contracted any... Uh, viruses that are causing the world to shut down recently um who knows peed wrong how do you know that how do you know i just peed? i don't know <laughs> how do you know did i just peed it? and it was did wrong you, <laughs> did you do it wrong that's the question <laughs> you ever you ever go to pee and you just miss <laughs> you just straight up just completely miss it's usually one of the yes. It's usually one of those days where you're like, "How can this day get any worse?" And then that happens, and like you're not even mad or upset. You're just like, "Yeah, <laughs> I did not. I made it all in today. I'm just, <laughs> t- today was a fine pee just now." Anyway, uh, we took a planned break here on the podcast uh, for the holidays. Then the following week, uh, we took an unplanned break. I sat down, got on Discord with Will, and then about a minute later, threw up everywhere. <laughs> we we were literally uh, ready to hit start, and then Bob disappeared and then came back and said, I threw up. I felt it coming on, so I turned off my camera and my mic, <laughs> and, and I just I just leaned back in my chair, and then... And then it just, I couldn't, I couldn't hold it in. I haven't thrown up in like, in like six or seven years. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, it's not something, it's not something you regularly do, but when it happens, you know, something is wrong. There's people who can throw up and then be like, all right, I'm good. That's not me. Yeah. I'm not one of those people. I, I, I throw up and I'm out. I'm out for the yeah. whole, whatever I'm doing, I'm done doing it. I gotta, I gotta yeah. not do that thing. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, I had food poisoning for like a day and a half, uh, and that was terrible. Uh, that was, that was about, uh, what, two weeks after having COVID? Yes. (laughs) So I had COVID. I think COVID might've, uh, uh, had an effect on my immune system because, well, I had Asia grill. I think that's Uh the culprit of my food poisoning. I used to love Asia grill. I used to eat Asia grill all the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh. Yeah, I could. I, my body couldn't handle it this time. But anyway, we're back here to. Yes. Uh, we're not here to talk about puke. We're here to talk about no. uh, video games and whatnot. Video games. Also, I'm at the studio. That's why it looks different. Uh, in case you were wondering, uh, and that's also why there was a little bit of technical difficulties. I hit. We everything was set up, ready to go. I hit start streaming, and it just said no. <laughs> it was like no, <laughs> you can't. Um. But anyway. Today, we have to talk about all of the stuff coming out in 2022. I'm yes. going to have a video on Nintendo Switch stuff coming out in 2022 on Thursday. We can talk about some Nintendo Switch stuff. But today, yeah, we're I mostly would... going to be talking about all of the other consoles. And there's not really much Nintendo Switch stuff to talk about because... Well, there is, but Nintendo generally... Are you generally high? Sa- Well, what I'm trying to say is Nintendo generally saves their big announcements for the year... For later in the year. There are so many big Switch games coming out this year. All right. Well, I'm looking at one of them right now, and that's speculative as all hell. So. Uh, are you saying Breath of the Wild? Sequel to Breath of the Wild? You call that speculative? Absolutely. It, they could, speculative they well. confirmed it as 2022. Did Does, they confirm it? Because I've never Nintendo said 2022. Seen, I've never seen Nintendo say that. They did. I don't believe them, but they did. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we also, it's the top of the month. We got to talk about the games coming out this year. Yes. I mean, I mean I'm sorry. We got to talk about the free games you can get with your, with your, with your gaming service of choice, with your online gaming yes. service of choice. We also missed two weeks, so we got a whole lot of things to talk about. Yeah. We got a whole lot of actual gaming news. So we're going to try yeah. to rip through as much of this as possible because we have things to do. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure you do too. Yeah. Uh Capriccio says uh Capriccio says uh they also confirmed Breath of the Wild for 2016 just saying. Yeah, no, I know. True. Every single and- Zelda game has been delayed. Yes. 
I think. Since when? Every single one since when? They've I think since Wind Waker. I want to say before, even before that. I think since mm-hmm. Ocarina. Yeah, Zelda, Zelda has Zelda's known for delays. It'll be delayed. Yeah, but it's, they say it's coming out this year. So. Uh, anyway, let's talk about uh, before we get into all the new cool stuff coming out this year. On Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, and what have you. Let's talk about the games you can get with PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live. And also Nintendo Switch Online. Oh, that's right. Um, So on the PS Plus, if you're subscribed to that, you get Persona 5 Strikers on PS4, Dirt 5 on PS4 and PS5, and Deep Rock Galactic on PS4 and PS5. I actually kind of want to try Persona 5 Strikers. That is the action RPG <laughs> spinoff. Yes. Of Persona 5. Correct. I was literally just watching a zero punctuation review of this specifically. And that's what I took away from it. It is the action RPG spinoff of Persona 5. <laughs> well, I don't want to play a turn-based RPG. Right. <laughs> so I feel, and I kind of want to take a gander. I want to dip my toe into Persona. Mm-hmm. So like this, oh, you know what? It looks like freaking, uh, it, it looks like, a, what do you call it? Uh, Hyrule Warriors or the, the uh, Dynasty Warriors. Oh. Uh, oh. Dynasty Warriors isn't bad. It's just that they made the same game a hundred times. <laughs> I kind of liked Hyrule oh. Warriors. I kind of like Yeah, Hyrule Warriors was good. Uh, and Hyrule Warriors has a free demo, I believe, that it lasts yes. like two hours. Yes. Uh, anyway, so what else do we got? Oh, wait, there's a side-scrolling part? You didn't tell me that, Will. Oh, I didn't know there was a side-scrolling part in it. Uh, there is. You're leaving, you're leaving that out. It looks like it looked like yeah. a little bit of stealth, too. Interesting. All right, what else? All right. Uh, f- over on Xbox... Uh, let's see. On wait, wait, what? You, what? Oh, yeah. I guess you talked about all the games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> well, usually we go one at a time. Persona Five, yeah, it's a great game. Dirt Five, oh yeah, it's a great game. Uh, the, uh what? The I'm Deep sorry. Rock we have a lot to cover, and mm-hmm. I thought it would just be a good idea to speed through these as best yep. as we could, uh-huh. especially because the mm-hmm. Xbox ones ain't all that much to write home about. Oh, uh, what? What else is new? I've never heard of any X- of these games. On Xbox One uh, and Series X, it's Neur- Neuro Voider till uh-huh, the end of, of the month, a ground from the 16th to February 15th, and on Xbox 360, it is Radiant Silver Gun for the first half of the month and Space Invaders Infinite Gene for the second half of the month. That's uh, pretty terrible. It's a pretty terrible uh, list Xbox has there. I mean, Space Invaders is Space Invaders. You you can't really go wrong with that. Uh, Radiant Silver Gun is from the makers of uh, Gunstar Heroes, and it's a one of those like hard as hell uh, shoot 'em up type games. So if you're into that, that might be fun for you. But I cannot speak to Neuro Voider or a Ground. Uh, as far as Game Pass, Rainbow Six Extraction is going to be added on January 20th. That's the new that, one, right? That's the brand new one, yeah. Yeah. That's Rainbow Six with zombies for some reason. <laughs> Just like Tom Clancy intended. Yep. And Spelunky 2 will be added on January 15th. Oh, that's fun. So in two days. Oh, and Outer Wilds. Yeah. Outer Wilds is also coming out for, for uh, Nintendo Switch. Now, Outer Wilds is, is not the Obsidian RPG. Yes. Okay. Correct. Correct. It is very important that we get that right. <laughs> also, for Nintendo, yes, we are getting Banjo Kazooie. Yes. When but is we, that dropping? We don't know. They just said January. Okay. Yeah, because I remember we talked about it on the podcast, but they never gave us a date. Yeah, we don't have we don't have any idea. Yeah. 
So any minute now, we'll be getting Banjo Kazooie on our Nintendo Switch. Yeah. If you have the expansion pass, you need the expansion pass. Yes. Now, not just Nintendo Switch Online. You need, you need that extra little thing that you pay money. For. Yeah. You, you know the the thing we all complain is too expensive. Right. Because it is. It's it is it is a decent amount of money for 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 what they have on it. But Banjo Kazooie that'll add a little more value. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, oh, we forgot to also thank our supporters here. We got Snooze Attacks. Thanks for the Prime. We got Akemeister. Thanks for the eight months. Here to drop off my monthly Prime stuff. Go to bed. Bye, guys. Good night. Have a good night, Akemeister. Good night. Uh, Lee Doug, thank you for the Prime subscription. Definitely your mom sit with five months. Stopping by for the resub. Can't stay for the content. That's totally fine. You guys rule. Thank you. Definitely your mom. Uh, Zala Cant Place, thank you for the 100 bits. And Edward Bova, thanks for the host. Appreciate all you people. Uh, remember, even if you're just listening to us on a podcast service or whatever, but you have Amazon Prime, go link it to your Twitch account. Go to twitch.tv slash wolfden, and you can support the show for free. We get paid, and it doesn't <laughs> cost you any money. You just have yeah. to do a thing. And you have to redo it every month because uh, it doesn't auto do it. Uh, but I appreciate you. Uh, and if you do it during a live stream, I'll read your name and you can leave a little note and talk to me. Anyway, games coming out this year. Is there a list somewhere? <laughs> I just uh, I just Google 2022 video games and it gives you like that top list, that list up at the top. You know what I yeah. mean? Mm-hmm. I have a list of the Nintendo Switch stuff, so if we if we miss anything, right. I could refer to my own list. Mm -hmm. um, I like to do thing. Game Informer is Game Informer the one? No. Usually, is it the gamer? It might be the gamer. One of these websites does a good chronological. Okay. I think it is the gamer. Go to the gamer. They do a good chronological. Okay, I am there. Uh. Okay. Boop. So here we are, thegamer.com. Uh with a lot of well, ads galore. <laughs> <laughs> um so in January, we got Rainbow Six Extraction, which I'm not very excited about. Let's look at Rainbow Six Extraction. We just talked about it. Uh Rainbow Six Extraction, uh, of course, Rainbow Six with zombies. Yeah, so I've you been kind of dying for a why can't i find a video of this stupid thing i i've been kind of dying for uh uh like uh like tactical shooter like a strategy not yeah. a strategy but you know what i mean like like rainbow like six an, had like some sort old of strategy school rainbow six game yeah yeah and there's a game called ready or not that people have been streaming that looks like old school rainbow six meets Swap. i've heard of that yeah uh, yeah oh yeah it looks awesome Wait, is and i want to play that enough? it's called ready or not it like literally just came out. Yeah. Uh, but the last rainbow so so there was Rainbow Six Vegas and which was awesome. Yeah. I loved Rainbow Six yeah. Vegas. Then yeah, there Rainbow was Rainbow Six Vegas was very good. Then there was gonna be Rainbow Six pa Patriot. Oh my god, I still cry that Rainbow Six Patriots never came out. <laughs> and they had an amazing trailer for it. And then they just yeah. canned it. They just said they just said nah, and then they released Rainbow Six Siege, which mm -hmm. was good, but like when it launched, it wasn't, and it wasn't anything. Ne it wasn't anywhere near what I wanted out of a Rainbow Six game. Yeah. It like kind of had the terrorist hunt mode, but like not really. It, 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 I didn't like it. It, it was a multiplayer focused shooter, and Rainbow Six, like going all the way back, had a very good, very solid single player. I I enjoyed Rainbow Six multiplayer a lot. I played a lot of Rainbow Six multiplayer. That's what I, what I yeah, did no, most it, of my stuff. But but I also really enjoyed doing terrorist hunts with other people. So you get a team yeah. of other people to like save save like hostages and stuff. Yeah, no, it had one of the best multiplayer modes out there. But I think especially for me, having it only be multiplayer, no matter how fun the game actually is, and apparently the game is fantastic now. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't seem like something I would want to, you know, spend time or money on. 
apparently this these are uh, not zombies in Rainbow Six Extinction. These are uh, aliens. <laughs> but they're like oh, kind of zombies. That <laughs> that's okay. That Tom would allow <laughs> aliens. It kind of looks exactly like Left 4 Dead. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is uh like like part of what made Rainbow Six awesome was the realism. Like Yeah. Like you get shot in the in the foot and you're like limping, you know? Yeah. Like like, like and you had like basically two shots and you're dead. Yeah. Uh, it, it it was it, it it felt like a simulator back in the day. Yeah. But uh yeah, now we're doing this. So so yeah. <laughs> I'm so. not I'm not too jazzed about Extinction. I mean, maybe I'll give it a try because it's on Game Pass. Yeah. Um, but I'm not too happy about it. Uh, God of War and Monster Hunter come out for PC this month. That uh, Yeah. Um, so does the Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection. Interesting. Yeah. So that's Sony's uh, showing Sony's commitment to putting all their old games on PC. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's it's something. Oh, it's also coming to PS5, apparently. The yes. <laughs> Legacy of Thieves. Um, also, I also just want to state, uh, ready or not, it is the game I'm thinking of. It's the game that uh, apparently has a school shooter scenario in it. So there's one thing I'm not, that I'm a little sus of with ready or not. You can kill kids. Yeah, <laughs> and that's a thing that it, that will make your game rated uh, AO or banned on certain uh, uh, services. So yeah. normally, that's not a thing you could do in a game. Normally, they don't allow you to. They, normally, if you shoot a kid in a game, it, it's just nothing happens. Like it's like invincible. Yeah. Um, but apparently, that's not how it works in this game. It's yep. kind of fucked up. It's very. I don't know how I feel up. about that. But anyway, I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure there's more nuance to it and whatnot or whatever, but still, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, but anyway, there's a uh, there's the biggest deal game coming out this month is Pokemon Legends Arceus. Yes, a.k.a. Pokemon Are You Happy Now? <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> because, yeah. Cause, <laughs> because this is what people <laughs> wanted. Yeah. So, is it pronounced Arceus? I've been saying Arceus, and I got to record later. So, so I've been talking about this game, so I got to get it right. I want to say Arceus. It's. I feel like it is Arceus. Not Arceus. That doesn't sound right. Or Arceus. Pokemon Legends right. Arceus. I won't say... I'm not saying Arceus, because that's an E. Okay. I mean... <laughs> it's Arc... Arc e us. Arceus. I don't even remember what I was just saying. Well, how did I start off saying it? I think you said Arceus. 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 It's Cius. Okay, you got. You guys have to come up with a. You guys have to form a consensus. Yeah. So do a poll. I'll do a poll. <laughs> <laughs> have you? How much of this game have you seen? Um, I remember seeing like the first few uh, trailers that they released, but then I haven't seen much since. I tweeted, wow, they really just made Pokemon the Old Republic. <laughs> and pe people didn't get what I meant. Oh, um, no oh boy. <laughs> you want to I, explain yourself, Bob? I think there's just too many uh, youngins who have never seen or have never experienced the Old Republic games. Uh, and I didn't even I, play them. I only played which, the Old Republic. <laughs> which is interesting because anytime you bring up, especially Knights of the Old Republic, and how much we don't like it, <laughs> uh, you, you get at least like a couple people being like, you're an idiot. So, not surprising. Oh, I, guess, I guess the Pokemon crowd and the KOTOR crowd don't really overlap all that much. So Arceus, Arceus, and Arceus. Those are those are the options. Are 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 any of those is is there a, a fourth one I don't know about? <laughs> Arceus, Arceus, and Arceus. 
are coups. Okay, I'm just starting the poll. <laughs> um. So anyway, it seems like the old repo. So actually, you know what? I wrote a great. I I wrote it in my script. Uh, I can't. I could. I I can't say it better off the cuff. Um. Uh, it's taking place many years in the past, from right. what we're used to with Pokemon. Uh, with older, more primitive technology and mm -hmm. and primitive combat and expanded lore. That's very clearly like the Old Republic style of like how we're very used to being in this time period for this, for yeah. this franchise. And then all of a sudden we're going way back to like the, the, the beginning of everything. And all of the like technology, all of the fake f technology that doesn't exist is now primitive. <laughs> So, Which was kind of stupid in Old Republic because aside from, like, actual swords, it looked exactly like regular Star Wars, even though it was 4,000 years in the past. Yeah, some of it was kind of, uh, uh, like, you had Han Solo-style characters that were just Han yeah. Solo, and the blasters were the same. <laughs> they sh Yeah, they should have made the lightsabers a little more primitive looking, but they they really just wanted an excuse to, to have... Yeah. Uh, uh, Star Wars to 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 make it a normal Star Wars game that everybody would know. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm very excited for this. I have little faith in the Pokemon Company now because they've been they haven't been uh, on top of their game lately. Yeah. Uh, but I'm very down for a different genre of AAA Pokemon game. I need I need something different, and and I don't like turn based yeah. stuff, so I'm I'm happy to not just mash buttons. Yeah. I think for as much as we talked about, you know, as much as we liked Sword and Shield at the time, it was very simplistic and very reminiscent of what the Pokemon games have always been for the last 20 years. And something like this definitely seems to be a step towards just something new, something completely different. Yeah. Um so, so what we said at the beginning was that this is like what everybody wants. This is the Pokemon game yeah. everyone wants because it's like looks expansive. It's like people want like the Breath of the Wild of Pokemon games or the Skyrim know? of Pokemon games. Yeah, yeah. So this looks like an expansive world you can like check out and like you know you can ride mm -hmm. your Pokemon around. Uh, you're fighting the Pokemon yourself. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if like you can fight alongside your own Pokemon, but yeah. you are the one who is taking down the other. Uh, 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 wild Pokemon, right? So, uh, yeah, I'm again. I'm down to try this out. There's, a, there's a, there's a, uh, a Dark Souls style dodge roll. <laughs> I, I, uh, I just, I just think it's gonna be a much smaller game than it looks like. You know, mm -hmm. like I think it's gonna be long because every Pokemon game is long as fuck. But uh, I, I don't think it's gonna be like Breath of the Wild. Like the map's not gonna be that big. Yeah. But again, I'm excited to check it out. Uh, that comes out at the end of the month on the 28th. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's very soon. What else do we have? We have February coming up. February. Got, February seems to be like a big month. We got Sifu. That's a game that I'm actually very excited about. Oh, it's going to be on PS4. Yes. Uh, Yeah. All this, right. This is going to have me going... Gonna dust off my PlayStation Five. <laughs> gonna 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 download get download. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna dust off my PlayStation Five. <laughs> it's gonna yell at me for having unplugged it, even though I didn't. Then I'm gonna have to download an update to the console, and then an update to my controller, and then I will play Sifu. <laughs> So Sifu is like a it's like a it's like a 3D beat 'em up. Yes. Uh but the the kind of gimmick here is that every time you die, you age three years? Yeah, something like that. Uh so so you you can you have a limited amount of lives because you yes. could you, you can could... you can effectively age out of the game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Which that seems cool. pretty cool. I'm yeah, yeah. I'm kind of down for for that sort of a, a, a gimmick, and and it looks like it's got really good combat. Yeah, it kind of reminds see... me of that Absolver game, that Absolver yes. game that was like a like a like a 3D multiplayer fighter. 
I'm interested to see if that mechanic, you know, every time you die, you age, if that is integrated into the story of the game at all. And if the game story changes, depending on how old you are by like a certain point in the game, I think that would be really interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the story is, honestly. Yeah. Uh, apparently y- your, your like power doesn't change. Like, like you're still hit just as hard when you're like 70 as you do when you're like 20. Okay. Um, so you don't really have like a, the only penalty you have is that you will eventually run out of time and also you will look older. Yeah. Uh, although I don't know what effect it's going to have on the story. Apparently it is the same studio that made Absolver. That's why it looks like Absolver. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, that I mean, that's, I, I wanted to try Absolver and I think it was free on uh, PlayStation Plus or something. Um, I wanted to try that. But the fact that it's multiplayer, I f- like like you know online. I feel like that kind of yeah. turned me off. So this is a good way to get into that style of combat because it's a you know a single player situation. Yeah, you get slower but sh- but stronger as you age. Well, I remember a trailer. I remember hearing it doesn't affect you at all. Never saw Sifu until now. That looks cool as fuck. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Bobby Big Brush for the 100 bits. Uh, so this was in one of the PlayStation Direct things that yes. have almost all been terrible. <laughs> <laughs> this was like the only cool thing I saw out of those. You hit yeah. harder, but you get hit harder too. Their strikes will be, Weird. as the character ages, uh, their strikes will be more powerful, but they will have less health. Oh, Okay. Well, so that's then. interesting. I'm gonna. So I that, feel myself uh, resetting the game a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. Also, that month, big month for PlayStation, Horizon Forbidden West. Oh wow, that's early in the year. I have no doubts that this is a great game. I have not played the first one. I have no interest in playing this one. I have the first one. I haven't touched the first one yet. It's just sitting on my hard drive. I've heard it's excellent. And that's from like people who don't really like play video games as much as we do. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like I would like it. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's a commitment. And I have other games. Yeah. Like, like, why would I play this when I still haven't finished Breath of the Wild? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a more important game that I need to, that yeah. I need to get into. This trailer... I mean, it's pretty, but like, show me the game. <laughs> like, they're just showing me the environments. Like, I want to. Yeah. Well, see. Maybe the they're not showing you the game because it's too similar to the first one. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't know what Horizon Forbidden West is, it's that uh, prehistoric robot game. <laughs> technically, yes, but technically, no. <laughs> Uh, it takes place. It, it takes place in the future, and apparently, something that got spoiled for me in the game was the location of where the game. Takes it's not. Place. I've never played the game before, and I already knew that. <laughs> like, yeah. I already know what's what the story. I already know what's going on. Right. And it I, only and makes I, like, sense. You got robots. How do they get there? And like the big twist is like. Yeah, it takes place in Chicago or something like that. Spoiler alert, by the way. For that, isn't that game. the twist in... Oh, that's a twist in Planet of the Apes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the twist... Yes, actually. The twist <laughs> in Planet of the Apes is that they were on Earth the whole time. But there's a game... Oh, uh, Pikmin. Pikmin is the yes. same thing. Pikmin. Um, isn't Splatoon... Like, there's like there's like a like lore where they think Splatoon is Earth. Yeah, because I think Splatoon 3... Didn't the trailer open? They were in front of... Um, the Eiffel Tower in a sandstorm. Something like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, there's a Destiny 2 DLC for anybody who cares. Um, there's a new King of Fighters game. Oh, well, we're leaving out everybody's most anticipated game this year, <laughs> Elden Ring. Yes. The 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 long-awaited next game from From Software, uh, co-written by George R.R. R. Martin. Yeah, I, like, everybody's stoked for this. I know. I do, I I get it because people really like the Souls games. Yes. I don't like them that much. 
Like, I see the appeal, but I'm not, not for me. Uh, this just seems like those games. It doesn't seem like anything different. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm, I'm glad people are getting more of the stuff that they like, but yeah, it seems like the, this just seems like more of that. Apparently this is four player. Okay. Like you like, can play with, with, with three other people. Interesting. Uh, I don't the know only, how that's going to work. The only thing that this, the only difference this, this looks like between, between this and, and, and Dark Souls is that this looks like it has a warming filter over it and Dark Souls has a cooling filter over it. That's yeah. It. Um, but anyway, I'm uh, glad you guys are getting what you want. It comes out in February. <laughs> Uh, so look out for that. End of February, February twenty fifth. Um, next March we got what do we got? We got Grand uh, Turismo Seven. I'm surprised uh, that we haven't gotten a Grand Turismo game in a very long time, and that's always been like the premier <laughs> Sony game to show off just how cool their graphics are compared Grand to Grand Turismo else. is always delayed. Yes. Gran Turismo is but, always in development and always delayed. Like a Gran lot. Turismo is always it's always uh gets delayed, but it's always the most graphically impressive game on the system and it's always like one of their best sellers. Right. Uh like if you look at like the PS1, 2 and 3, the top, in the top 5 best selling games, it's there's always a Gran Turismo in there. Yeah, um, it's, so Gran Turismo is always a big deal and it makes sense why it's always delayed. They they want to like but, perfect it. But I think in a shocking turn of uh, change of pace, I think for, uh, Forza has surplanted Gran Turismo as the premier racing sim mm -hmm. for like serious racers out there. Because I know why. It's because they actually make those games <laughs> and they release them on a, like a regular schedule. Yeah. And like update them and stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. I really do. I still have not played Forza Horizon. Uh, the the last one yeah uh that was like people were saying it was like their game of the year and stuff yeah uh i need i need to i need to get into that i have it downloaded i just never just never touched because yeah. it, it was on game pass uh but yeah no i believe it i it's like <laughs> gran turismo is very simmy yes it's very simmy and and forza forza motorsport yes is very simmy but I liked that. I always liked that more. It felt more approachable than Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo, right. like I had a friend who they cut every time they make one of these games, they come out with the Gran Turismo Apex, which is like a like a book that you that tells you everything about all of the cars, and yeah. it's it's it really tell like it's like it's real. Like it tells it's yeah. not like a strategy. It is a strategy guide, but it's also a real guide for the cars in the game. <laughs> so. uh Everything matters, like the tires and and whatever, and the fucking type yeah. of engine that's in it, and all that shit. So like, like it's like too much. It's like too much to know, you know. And it's great for car enthusiasts, but I just want to hit. I just want to hit the gas pedal and, and go. Yeah, you know. So that's kind of why I like the uh, Forza a little more. Oh, Gran Turismo Six was on the PS3 in 2013. God, they skipped. But we went generation. an entire we went an entire console generation without a Gran Turismo game until now. Yeah, because this is going to be a PS4 and PS5 game. Yeah. Also, will yes, Bob. You you know, you're really excited about this one. Triangle strategy <laughs> from from the people who brought you Octopath Traveler. So so. I thought you were going to say Chocobo GP. Uh, also that. Yes. When did they drop the project part? Because I had that on my bingo card. I had a bingo it, card, and I, I said Project Oct Project Triangle Strategy, now just called Triangle Strategy. <laughs> yeah. It, it wasn't that long after they announced the game. Right. Uh, this game looks like some nerd shit. Yeah. Uh, I know that Kevin Kenson is very excited. <laughs> uh, I uh, just don't want to look at it anymore. <laughs> it's it's has it really does have a weird art style. It's not but, it's not even it's not even so much like the three D and two D hybrid. 
crap that they're doing. It's more so the color palette. It's that like a weird. It's like a weird like tilt shift. Yeah, and and, and like and like it's kind of like they have pixelated stuff, but it's the backgrounds aren't. It's 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 weird. And yeah, the the. Every, the the color palette's weird. Everything's like dark. Yeah. But like but like there's there's like bright accents. It's very, very weird. But but good for the RPG nerds. They're getting a yeah. big old RPG. Uh and then she, Will's Will's absolute favorite Chocobo GP. Chocobo GP, baby. Now now a lot of games like to a, a lot of people a lot a lot of these companies, they try to enter the cart genre of game and make it their own yes and and square enix is doing that here with the final fantasy uh license Mm -hmm. but this if you showed me this and said this was mario kart i'd be like oh they added final fantasy characters to mario kart that's crazy yeah Yeah. this look this this doesn't look like its own game. This looks yeah. <laughs> just straight up. Like at least the Sega one looks like its own game. The the uh the Crash the looks Crash like, its, looks own like its own game. Yeah. This does not look like this looks like Mario Kart. Yeah, and I don't see anything in this trailer that remotely separates it from right. Mario Kart. Like nothing. <laughs> and why would I play that when I can play Mario Kart? Especially when Chocobo GP is only coming out on Switch. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, the next game, there's a game called Tunic. Uh, and I just Googled it and I forgot to put game. So I just got a guy in a <laughs> tunic. Gotta, yeah. Uh, no, this game, it looks like a uh, like an indie version of like an old school Zelda game. Okay. So I'm kind of down. It's like an isometric, uh, yeah, yeah, old school Zelda game. You play as a little fox who's in a tunic and kind of looks exactly like uh, Link. And there's like puzzles and whatnot. It looks really cool. Uh, does it say Switch? Uh, no, no Xbox uh, and PC. I hope it's on Game Pass. Yeah, looks pretty cool. Uh. Persona 4 is getting a uh, another fighting game. Yes. Uh, and then I guess that's really it for, for March. Really? Yeah. April, there's only two games on here. Two games. Uh, 13 Sentinels and Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. All right. So April, we can all take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> I know people who are excited for Stalker and... Uh, I know recently they they announced that they're not going to put NFTs in the game <laughs> after backlash, which is good on you as opposed to other studios. I have the first few games in the Metro series, and I haven't played them yet. And I feel like I could just play those and get the same vibe. <laughs> right. Um. In May. Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song is that the that's not the that's not the battle royale is it I don't know I know they were supposed to do another Vampire the Masquerade game but I don't know if that's it because there was Vampire the Masquerade Bloodline which came out in like 2004 and I want to say that oh no there's there is a specific Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 so that's a different thing altogether. Mm-hmm. Swan Song is it's a it's a role playing game. So what's the difference between Bloodline? Yeah, this is a new game in the franchise. It looks like okay. Uh, it, it does not look like the arc, the 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 battle royale that I'm thinking of. Okay. Also in May, Forspoken. That's the uh, PlayStation oh, 5 yes. exclusive uh, that uh, you play as this uh, woman who uh, has a, an arm that talks to her. Yes. And and uh, there's a lot of particle effects. Yes. Uh, it looks could, pretty good. Could be good. It could be super annoying with all the, the witty <laughs> banter between you and your arm. I was not having the witty banter in the first trailer. I was not oh, having my it God. at all. 
And then the second trailer, I still wasn't really having it. But at this least is, the at least the gameplay looks good. <laughs> there, uh, it, it it sucks because I, a lot of games like this and Sunset Overdrive and Borderlands, their definition of humor is just talking a lot or cursing, or cursing, yeah, or just cursing. And like that's so, oh, wow, that it, was so funny. My arm cursed at me. Yeah, it's like, oh man, my arm j- won't just shut up. Isn't he funny? Oh, he referenced pop culture. Oh, how cool. <laughs> I curse a lot, but there's an art to it, you know? Yeah. Um Okay. So that looks that that's play that's the next PlayStation. Oh, it's also coming for PC. Never mind. <laughs> not <laughs> not really a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Um then we got June. Which is nothing. Cuphead. Uh, Steel series of uh, AI, Still the series. summoning files. Uh, Still sorry, rising. Steel Rising. Steel Rising. Uh, AI, the summoning files, and Cuphead in the delicious last course. Yes, that will be a DLC. Yes. Uh, so that's June. Yes. July, what? As of last time, this calendar was updated. Nothing is slated to launch in July, but given the eternal hunger of gamers to play games and the boundless creative drive of developers to make them, we're sure something will get scheduled eventually. That writer I mean, just earned his his paycheck right there. <laughs> you got to remember, you know, games get announced and delayed all the time. This, this list is subject to change. Mm-hmm. So this is just as of right now. So maybe something will come out in July. And if not, then you got plenty of time to catch up on all the games you bought earlier in the year. July will also be E3? No, that's June. One of those. Not like we care. <laughs> yeah, so E3 is going to be all digital again. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, and I suspect, I have a feeling, Nintendo's mm-hmm. going to say some Mario stuff. Because there's nothing Mario coming out at all. They have nothing uh, in the pipeline Mario at yeah. all. Except for we recently learned about something that we'll talk about later it's not i think it's stupid anyway yeah um august we just have saints row (laughs) yes what is that a remake of the original it's like a complete reboot of it Mm -hmm. so i i bought saints row 4 for the switch because it was only like two (laughs) dollars so i'll finally be able to play a saints row game and see what all the hype is about saints row the reboot Mm -hmm. is coming out for everything but the switch PlayStation yes. 4, 5, Xbox One, and Series, and PC. September. Test drive. Okay. We're getting worse okay. and worse. Uh, October <laughs> well, has nothing. Well, again, we're like really far out now. Right. Uh, November has Starfield. That'll, that's, that's probably going to be November's biggest game. It's probably not going to come out in November. I don't know. They're committed to that 11 11 22 date. Oh, it looks nice on the poster. That's true. Yeah. Starfield is the uh Bethesda game that uh that- is is holding up our Elder Scrolls. <laughs> yeah. Uh we don't know much about it. We had a we all we have is teaser trailers. I imagine it's Skyrim in space. Yeah, or Fallout. Or Fallout in space. Yeah. So uh, I'm sh- I'm sure everybody's gonna love it when it comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in December, nothing. Homeworld three. There's a lot of games, a lot of to be announced games that are 2022 and no date at all. Yes. Azure Striker Gun Vault three. I did not know was was 2022. Yep. There's that. There's Avatar Frontiers oh, of say. Pandora. <laughs> I'm a big fan of of the original Gunvolt. Thought you were gonna say you were a big fan of Pandora of uh, Avatar. <laughs> no, I could give two shits about Avatar. About the uh, classic. Bayonetta three is also scheduled for this year. Uh, Bomb Rush Cyberpunk is scheduled for this year. That's coming out. When is that coming out? That's Dude. coming out. Yeah, it's coming out. Isn't it? Yeah, in like February or something. Oh wow. Uh 
Uh, Bomb Rush Cyberfuck is the uh, is the game that is made by the P. The uh, they're trying to make a uh, jet jet yes. set radio. That one. I think it just says 2022 for for Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, but uh, yeah. But I feel like that is coming soonish. Yeah, I thought I I thought I saw a date. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Uh. Uh. What else we got? We got Bayonetta. Destroy three. all. Yeah, I said Bayonetta three. Bayonetta three is. That, that's one of the longest uh, anticipated Switch games. Yes. Uh, it'll probably come out. It, it was announced in December of 2017. Yeah. That will That'll... probably come out at the end of the year. We're going to yeah. be waiting on that one. Mm-hmm. There's that. There oh, is... C- Cyberpunk 2077 is coming out <laughs> this year. Oh, finally. Yeah. Can't wait to play that. Uh... Don't Starve Together, Digimon Survive, Dune Spice Wars, Dragon Age 4. I did not know we were getting another Dragon Age game. Also, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. Remember that one? Mm. This game looks sick. Yes. It's coming out sometime this year. Uh, uh, God, of, God of War Ragnarok is scheduled for this year on PS4 and PS5. Hello. I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, that'll that'll also probably be a holiday release. Yeah, uh, Gotham Knights is scheduled to come out this year. We don't know that's much the about bat- that. That's the Batman game where you play as everybody but Batman. Right. They never really like showed us like gameplay, did they? They did. When they first revealed it, they actually showed like gameplay. Like they showed uh-huh. you it's it's open world. They showed you you get motorcycles to ride around on. Every character has a different ability, like specific to them. Like Robin hacked the Justice League satellite so he can teleport. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So I'm, sh- and it's not being made by Rocksteady, so I'm sure it'll actually be different from the Arkham series, but okay. still feel like a Batman game, even though Batman is not in it. <laughs> he's definitely, he's, definitely he's in fucking it. in it. Also, Fall Guys is coming to Switch and Xbox. Yes. Um, we also have Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Oh, that's coming out this year. That's, that's the coming Kirby yeah. Kirby: The Last of Us. Uh, Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga is coming out for everything this year. That's another game that has been uh, in development and and talked about for like a, like it was announced a really long time ago. It was supposed Which to come I'm out surprised. like two years ago, I think. I'm surprised that game got as delayed as it did mm-hmm. because it's a Lego game and it's a Lego Star Wars game. They've made a lot of those. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to come out when uh, the last movie came out. Yeah, which is in 2019. Yeah, that's a long time ago. That's yeah. so long ago. Back when we can enjoy ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Um. Mario plus Rabbit, Sparks of Hope. Speaking like. of enjoying ourselves. <laughs> oh, yes. Love this game. Uh, they, Ma- you loved Mario plus Rabbids. <laughs> it's time for a sequel. You guys did this. You guys yes. made that happen. Not Hope me. you're happy. Uh, Marvel Midnight Suns. I've seen this on a lot of like anticipated games lists. Uh, I'm not including it in my lists. Well, convince me that I'm making the right decision or that I, I should include this. Well, Bob, do you like XCOM? No. Then uh, why why would you play this game? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and not even like God, Midnight Suns is such an obscure thing in mm-hmm. Marvel and it's not even Suns as an S U N, it's Suns as an S O N. Okay, so it's that's like dumb. Ghost Rider and Doctor Strange and like the weird occult characters that don't even really have a team. And Wolverine's not on that team. <laughs> What's Resident Evil Reverse? Oh, that's their, like... I think that's their multiplayer. Oh, uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Wasn't... Yeah, that was supposed to be part of, um... The fuck is that? <laughs> this, none of, of... This trailer... That's supposed they... to be part of the Resident Evil 3 remake. 
none of them can aim in this trailer. It's their own trailer, and they can't aim <laughs> the That's... guns at the other characters. This looks this looks horrible. Yeah. Um. Anyway, stop Oxen trying to make Oxen stop trying to make Resident 2. Evil a multiplayer game. Oxen Free Two apparently uh, is coming out this yes. year as well. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Ninja Turtle Shredder's uh, Revenge. Yeah. Cannot uh, wait. Uh, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. Now that is being made by Rocksteady, um, but, and I'm not the only one who thinks this. It gives me way too many Sunset Overdrive vibes. I do not like that game all that much. Um, Prove me wrong, Rocksteady. Splatoon three is also confirmed for yes. this year. We just don't know when. Uh, again, probably holidays. This holiday is going to be packed out. Yeah. Uh. And Sonic Frontiers. Yes. Which is way too quick. They just released a, a teaser. Well, I mean, we uh, did we put the story in the keep? We did. Yes. They actually, you know, spoiler alert, they actually delayed it. I mean, let's talk about it right now. Screw it. All right. Uh, Sega delayed Sonic Frontiers for quality. <laughs> Whatever that means to Sonic Team. Uh, originally, it was planned to be released on this year, the 30th anniversary of Sonic, but we have postponed the release for a year in order to further brush up the quality. Oh, so they already delayed it. It's already been delayed. Yeah, yeah. Not so it's only come out in 2021. Not only for this title, but during the development phase, we have been steadily uh, conducting analysis to improve the quality of the title before release, such as introducing game testing based on external evaluations and we have a feeling that it will become a good game and have high expectations for it it will become a good game they're saying right now it is a bad right game right now it's not but it will become a good game i thank god i mean i i they got to make a good 3d sonic game they're going to yeah. have a lot of problems if they keep yeah. releasing bad 3d sonic games and I, and I think the fact that they're acknowledging that they have to delay it and why they have to delay it is a is a step in the right direction. Yeah. So that, I guess that's that's really it. I just skimmed through. Yeah. It doesn't look like there's much else. Well, um, there's also talking about like apparently they don't know what they're what they're gonna price it at. For the pricing strategy, we feel that we are at a point where we need to rethink. For example, for the new Sonic game, as we are focusing on quality and spending a certain amount of money on development, we think it is important to maintain the price by maintaining the value of the IP at a high level rather than simply lowering the price at early stage to increase the number of units uh, sold. <laughs> so this might be a full $60, $70 game. It definitely will be. I'm surprised that there was even an option to lower the price. Well, didn't Forces launch at a lower price point? That means that they knew that that was a bad game. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, that means that they were like, yo, this game sucks. We can release it now for like 40 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you, you guys down? You guys down for that? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it's definitely more worth it to just let it bake a little bit longer. Uh, I think... Oh, Breath of the Wild 2, of course. Yes. We talked about that. Allegedly. Uh, and that's it? Yes. Oh, Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt. Which is not Vampire the Masquerade Bloodline. Yes. Blood Hunt is the Battle Royale game. Okay. Yeah. Just, just you make your names a little better. <laughs> it doesn't help that the name of the tabletop RPG it's based on is Bl uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Right. Will, do you have a most anticipated game for the year? Uh, I am excited for Gotham Knights. Genuinely, um, I'm interested to I'm interested to see what they do with God of War, because the last game, you know, I wasn't as hot on on it as everyone else was but i think it's could lead to some in some interesting directions uh i'm interested i'm excited for sonic frontiers i'm not gonna lie uh other than that i'm trying to think 
what else do there? there's always a lot of games and most of the time i don't really know until like i see more of them you know right it's hard to say uh, i'm i'm excited for uh uh pokemon legends arceus believe it or not oh yes. i never finished the poll uh view results <laughs> Uh, fifty-five percent of of you guys said Arceus. Okay. So I'll be saying Arceus. Uh, thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> um, I'm excited for that game. Uh, otherwise, I got really no nothing. I'm like really jonesed about coming out this year. And I mean, yeah, th- it, there's the normal stuff. Kirby: The Forgotten Land looks. There's a lot of things that look really good, but nothing that yeah. I'm like, man, I can't wait for this thing to come out. There's a lot of. There's a lot of like I'm interested in this. I will mm-hmm. I will check this out, but there's nothing. There's no one game that I'm like, yes, this. Yeah. Um, that's not a bad thing. These games could surprise us. I th- I still think this is like the most stacked year as for the Switch at, at, that we've ever had. There's yeah. there's so much shit coming out this year, uh, and and there's only going to be more. This is all. all this yeah. is just the stuff that we know this is about. as of now. Yeah. My most anticipated game that we know about right now might be this game Dokev. It's not uh. Con- it doesn't have a confirmed uh. uh, uh date or your year window even this is that uh k-pop game uh that looks like uh like uh kind of looks like pokemon legends arceus the way you uh <laughs> the way you collect pokemon and 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 yeah, fight them yeah. and stuff um but this was uh i think this was announced before that uh it, it's it's got like it's got like weird like extreme sports stuff like you can like skateboard and and, and yeah. stuff in it uh to get around but also it's like a creature collecting and f- and fighting game. So so it, it, it this one looks really cool. Uh but I, I we don't know when it's coming out. Otherwise, uh, I'm excited for some of the Gunvolt stuff we got coming out. Uh and that's really it. Yeah. I guess some of the smaller indie stuff. What about you people in the chat? What do you care about? What do you care about the most? Uh, I'm hoping Yokai Watch 3 is brought to the Switch. Uh, That was on one of my lists. Yokai Watch 4, actually, is. is I was going to say, was there already a Yokai Watch 3? Yokai Watch 4 coming out this year? What's the deal? Or is that like a rumored thing? Oh, so they all—they're all out in in Japan. They—they they take they take a while yeah. to get localized, though. I think Yokai Watch Four is just up in the air. I don't think there's any talk about bringing it to America at all. Um, Frontiers, hoping for the best, dreading the worst. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, of course, Hollow oh. Knight Silk Song. Do I have that in my list? Yeah, I do have it. Um. Yeah, Hollow Knight is not confirmed. Still, Hollow Knight. Everybody's been waiting yeah. years for that. Beyond Good and Evil Two. I don't know what's going on with that game. Is that that game got announced and then I think the lead designer had to leave because he was accused of being a bad person. Mm-hmm. Um, and that studio is in turmoil. A lot of Ubisoft studios are in turmoil because. You thought Activision was bad. Yeah, there's no uh, confirmed date. Yeah. According to Henderson, the game might be releasing sometime in 2024 or 2025. I don't think that game's ever coming out, to be honest. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid remake? I am I am holding out hope for a Metal oh. Gear remake or yeah. something. I'm down for that. Oh, Sifu. I forgot about Sifu. I'm excited about Sifu. Yeah, Sifu. There's the Callisto Protocol, which is like a spiritual successor to Dead Space from the guys who originally created Dead Space. Oh, that's cool. That could be fun. Uh, a lot anyway, of in the chat are saying uh, Advance Wars One and Two. Oh yeah, we didn't talk about that. That is on my list of games to talk about for yeah. the video this week, though. So I will. I that is on my radar. 
I'm still very curious about Overwatch 2, hoping to get more information soon. Yeah, is that not confirmed for this year? They're like already uh, playing it, aren't they? Isn't aren't they already like doing tournaments with it? I saw that Lego isn't going to release the Lego set for Overwatch 2 because <laughs> yeah, of what's the, going on with Activision. That's the big news right now when I look up yeah. uh Overwatch 2. So there's that. <laughs> the initial release date is November 2022. I, I'll play it. I'll give it a shot when it comes out. I liked the first one. Yeah, the first one was very good. Anyway. Oh, and also Ali Ali World. We didn't talk about that. That comes oh, out right. very soon as well. Yes. Anyway, uh, we got a lot of notifications that we need to read. Yes. Uh, the Crab, thanks for the 11 months. Anthony Carvoni, thanks for 13 months. I need a new Switch game. I need ideas. Happy anniversary. You got Arceus coming out soon. Yeah, if you can just wait a little bit. Uh, what else came out recently? What now? Hmm. hmm. Try Gun Vault. I've been talking there about Gun go. Vault this whole time. Try Gun Vault. Uh, Chubby Frog, thanks for the 18 months. I do love Persona 5, but as a massive fan... Persona slash Shin Megami Tensei being my favorite series of all time. I couldn't get into Strikers. Music is very good, though. All right, well, then maybe I don't want to do it. Paul Line, thank you for the 36 months. Here's your prime, Bobbert and Will. Thank you very much. Thank you. RP, thanks for the 100 bits. Have you heard of Darth Garantina the Wise? I don't know what you're on about. Uh, Bobby Big Brush, thanks for the 100 bits. Never saw Sifu until now. That looks cool as fuck. It looks like it's going to be cool as fuck. Uh, Garantina mm. is a Pokemon. Oh, okay. And that sentence is a reference to uh, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith when Palpatine asks Anakin at the Opera House, have you heard the tale of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's layers to that, yeah. that bit. Mm, bro, thanks for the Prime subscription. Rock and Val, thanks for gifting a sub to Zell, Zello and a Latin Red with the 100 bits. Sup, Bob and Will. Hope you are having a good start into the new year. As inspired by Bob and Scootish's speedrunning, I'd like to be the first guy to any percent speedrun a 2022 ban. I'll be p binging you guys on YouTube like always. Here goes nothing. All Metroid games suck. All platformers are baby poo-poo. Resident Evil 4 is terrible. The analog pocket is dog water. Apple devices are for normies. Comics are for dummies. Perfect Dark and GoldenEye are overhyped Garbo. And lastly, Rue is a stinky, smelly boy. Well, you're right about okay, that last Okay, now, normally, yes, he would get Instabanned. However, because they're trying to go for a speed run, rather than Instaban, just going to let this sit and ruin his speed run. I might mod him. <laughs> just, to, just to ruin completely, it more completely mess him up yeah also Titus Praetor thanks for the prime I appreciate it no better invite Latin Red onto the show <laughs> yeah you have to sit here you have to sit with us it's the worst yeah. punishment uh, alright uh, <laughs> we need to plow through some more stories here we are yes. uh, we, 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 oh oh we got a story that's near and dear to our hearts, guys. Yes. Well, your heart. <laughs> Only mine. <laughs> well, because I'm not featured in this one as a, as a JPEG in the corner. Uh, some YouTuber or a YouTube streamer. I don't know if they called me that, but somebody called me a YouTube streamer. Some YouTuber uh, left the uh, their OLED switch on for 18 hours straight to see what happened. I put this video up. Uh, When did I put this video up? December 16th. It's almost been a whole month. And after I put the, a week after I put the video up, uh, a week after I put the video up, it made it to uh, uh, like uh, Japanese news sites <laughs> and like Portuguese news sites, but Jeez. not American. It took well, a whole month for somebody with a journalism degree to see my video <laughs> and decide it was worthy enough clickbait for Nintendo Life. And they wrote an article about it. How, how nice. And, and here's something I've been thinking about. 
for, for those of you who haven't seen the video, you should watch it. Uh, but it, yeah, the long and short of it is that you can leave your switch on for 1800 hours and nothing's going to happen. It, yeah. it, it, I forgot. I have, I have the switch running over there. I was just making sure it's still going because I haven't looked at it in, in like a week. Um, so yeah, you can leave your switch on. Nothing's going to happen. It's so it looks exactly the same. There's no burning at all. Maybe like a, a very small color shift. In the whites of the image, that's it. Everything looks exactly the same. Um, but anyway, I've been thinking about this because this is one of those situations, again, where Nintendo Life wrote the article. They were the first ones that I saw. And then, like, The Gamer, uh, Tech Radar, and then all these other, <laughs> like, websites started picking it up and writing about it. Isn't plagiarism, like, the worst <laughs> sin that you could do in journalism? Uh, yes. Are they referencing you directly? I, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not saying they're plagiarizing me. They're just reporting on what I did. That's totally fine. I'm not against that at all. I think it's weird that one news site will write about it. And then all of the other news sites are like, <laughs> oh, this guy wrote about this. Let's now free boot off of this. And they write their own they like they it's one of those like like don't let the teacher know that you yeah. copied off of me make it a little more make it in your own words they will quote the same quotes that i said but write a little they'll like change some words of, around it around the quote you know yeah so it's like uh, none of these other people watched the video <laughs> they they all just saw Nintendo Life write all, write about it, and then they just wrote around the quotes, basically. So, how is that? How how is that okay? <laughs> when did you post this video? December sixteenth. Because I just I just Google Switch OLED Burnin to see like who's who else did articles on it. Mm -hmm. There's a Reddit thread that says that dated October nineteenth. 2021 this youtuber tests switch oled burn in for 48 hours oh 48 hours well come yeah. on wait was that me am i the guy wait is <laughs> it you am i the guy who did it for 48 hours uh they said it was the metro they said it was doing it with metroid because i did oh. i did i did it for a week and then I was like, nothing happened. It's my gonna it might take a lot longer than that. But I didn't know. No, it's that. not you. It's I I cannot pronounce this. <laughs> what this what? is not in a language I'm familiar with. Is it a lot of consonants? It, it's it's a lot of lowercase words and then capital words. All right. A lot of words. Okay. His name is a lot of words. <laughs> no, the title is a lot of words. Um Anyway, all these all these articles wrote very nice things about me. I'm very happy about it. Uh, yes. There. I also the last thing I saw. I was taking a poop before. Uh, uh, Lou, you know, on Box Therapy, his his podcast. Yeah. They did a they did a feature on it. That's very nice. I oh, like wow. I like Lou Lou uh, on Box Therapy. You. Um. So so, when you have a lot of articles written about you. You get to apply for verification on on Twitter. <laughs> I already applied for verification when people were writing articles about. Oh, this is something that happened during the break too. We can. It's time for me to. <laughs> to all right, it's time for me to to gloat about uh, how famous I am. Uh, you can see right now if you just type my name into Google Google News, Twitter upset over Logan Paul ruining Game Boy colors. <laughs> Uh, I, I did want to say that one of the comments I saw about uh, this article was somebody said, though this guy just basically took a switch out of circulation and ruined it for and tried to ruin it <laughs> rather yes. than ha having someone actually buy it and play it. Yes. <laughs> Those are in production, <laughs> you piece of shit. Do you can if 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 Nintendo decides they need more switches, they can make more switches. They're not going to decide they need more Game Boy colors. Bob, just admit 
You're no better than Logan Paul. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, no, I'm going to encase it in resin too while I'm at it. Yeah. Also, I'm not. I don't like hate Logan Paul for this. All I said was <laughs> today the world lost 15 beautiful Game Boy colors. Sad face. And like he's he bought them. He can do it. I just I just I'm just upset that he did it. <laughs> like like yeah. if, like if somebody if somebody bought a comic book, like I don't know, like like of any note at all. And ripped it in half in front of me. I'd be like, I'd be like, "Whoa, why'd you do that?" Yeah, you know, that's like weird. <laughs> so, like, he has a right to do it. It's just, I just don't. I just like Game Boy, so it's like I'm here yeah. seeing the thing that I like get ruined. It's not, it's not a good feeling. Um, there, there was a way to have made that table, and he did it the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, basically. Here I am in the article. Bob, a notable retro gamer and YouTuber. A notable retro gamer. And here's the thing. When you apply for verification, you need to be a notable person. So once this article got written, I immediately applied for verification. <laughs> and I, I, I have never been denied quicker. <laughs> but you have, to, you, have to po you have to give them three articles that were written about you recently. Right. So I did the, uh, the, the, the Game Boy Advance Tenant video. Which was a while ago, which was kind of like you know it doesn't really count. I did that. I did this article, and that which calls me a notable retro gamer. So come on, mm -hmm. verification, come on. And then I also sent them a Japanese article that was also that was around this time that was very to recent to prove that you're Mr. Um, Worldwide. <laughs> I'm global, baby. I did a Japanese article about the burn-in, the OLED burn-in. So I was like, look, there's all these different things. But I guess they couldn't read Nihongo, so I uh, so I immediately got denied. But now there's American articles written about the OLED burn-in, so now I can apply again. However, you can't apply within 30 days of each other, so now I have to sit here and wait to apply again. I I forgot who it was. He had he had tweeted that he applied for verification, and then Eddie Burke. a minute later. <laughs> A minute later, he was rejected. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. And, and, and he said, like, the he showed, like, the, the first email he got from Twitter verification where it said, a human will review this application and get back to you. And then a minute later, he got the denial. So if, if you're being denied within a minute, that tells me that humans are not looking over these applications. <laughs> Or a there's human really doesn't like that person. Yeah, there's there's clearly like an algorithm at, at play here hmm. that's just filtering through all of these different applications. Also, if if I want to apply as a social media personality, I need hmm. more followers. I don't have enough followers. It, it, it says really? no. It's straight up just like no. <laughs> so I have to apply as a. Uh, I didn't apply as a news outlet, an entertainer, I think, or an entertainment group or something. I don't know. Okay. Cause I don't want to say I'm a journalist cause I don't want to, right. I don't want that smoke. Uh, Sui Kag Kagu Kaguda in the chat says, what benefits are there if you're verified on Twitter? Um, uh, this guy look awesome. <laughs> it's basically, you get that little blue check mark that tells people that this is you. This is not a fake account. This is not a fan account. This is, it, this is actually you. It makes me look important. But also, yeah. if I tweet at anybody else who's verified, no, if I tweet at anybody, it forces them to get a notification. <laughs> <laughs> so it means like, look at me. I'm a big, important person. Wait, Twitch or YouTube verified? I'm ver We are verified on Twitch and on YouTube. That's not a problem. Uh, being verified on Twitter is the problem. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Hey, if you ever want to see this YouTube, th all right. So, so Nintendo Life didn't call me a YouTube streamer, but all the other articles called me a YouTube streamer, which is wrong. But that's okay. At least they got it. They didn't call me a freaking computer programmer like they did last year. Yeah. Um. So if you have, if you haven't seen this guy, go watch that video. It talks all about OLED burning, what could have happened, and what didn't happen. Uh, anyway, that was a fun little thing that happened. This is an important thing that also happened. We're getting the golden eye, probably. Po probably, possibly. 
I'm I'm excited for this. We frequently on this channel talk about how hard it is to get a remake or or re or, or just a just, port just at all. Any re-release of GoldenEye for the Nintendo 64 for yeah. a modern console because Nintendo published the game, so they have claim to it. Uh, Rare developed the game, and Rare is now owned by Microsoft, so Microsoft has claim to it. Uh, and perhaps most importantly, that a lot of people seem to forget, uh, Eon Productions, who own the rights to James Bond, have the biggest claim to it. Mm -hmm. So all three of these people have to come together to basically say, yes, we can get GoldenEye 007 for the N64 on a modern system. Uh, but that might be happening as soon as my fucking computer will let me scroll down. <laughs> So I can read the article. It looks like Rare's classic James Bond game, GoldenEye 007, might be heading to Xbox. Achievements for the game have appeared online as part of by Wario64 and posted on True Achievements. Achievement pictures and a GoldenEye 007 thumbnail also appeared online, adding to the speculation that the 1997 N64 game might be heading to Xbox in the future. There are a total of 55 achievements worth a thousand gamer score according to the leak based on the text of the achievements it looks like both campaign and multiplayer are on the way so uh people in the chat are like is it the good version or the bad version or what's going on uh guys it according to the toilets in the achievement picture it is the original the original with N64 all game. of its polygons and everything yes so uh, uh this is this is what we want. This is everything yes. that we want out of it. Look at now, this look at this jaggy man. Now uh Rare did make a GoldenEye HD uh game. It famously never came came out officially. It did leak online not too long ago. Uh we got Perfect Dark instead. Um but GoldenEye is the one everybody wanted. We got the Activision published GoldenEye remake starring daniel craig as james bond which for all intents and purposes was not a bad game but it wasn't what we wanted <laughs> so it could very well be that we are getting the golden eye remake especially because as the article uh continues 2022 marks the 60th anniversary of the james bond series the company behind the franchise teased that fans should watch out for announcements, events, and new content across 2022. So a remake, a re-release of the original GoldenEye could be one of those surprises, especially because Daniel Craig just wrapped up his tenure as James Bond. We don't know when IO Interactive's James Bond game is coming out. There's a lull in James Bond right now. So a re-release of GoldenEye, the original GoldenEye, would be a great way to get to keep the character in the public conscience especially given the way the last movie ended not to spoil it but i was not a fan of it i haven't i haven't i'm like two two movies behind i think did you see specter i don't think so specter was the one where uh christoph waltz played blofeld in one of the dumbest reveals he's like hello james it is i the architect of all your pain I am really your brother, but I changed my name to Unstarve of Blofeld. Now I'm going to stick a needle into your brain, James. I know I did not. I did not yeah. see that one. That's a, that's a bad movie. Yeah, wait. It, was it revealed to be his brother in that movie? Yeah. That's, we're spoiling a lot of things today. I mean, I'm that's not spoiling. A... I, I don't mind spoiling Spectre because I, I don't want people to see Spectre. <laughs> You know, At what, least my, No Time to Die is like good up until like the last few minutes. My new favorite thing is finding out about like movies or TV shows and stuff or even games and then just looking up the Wikipedia article and reading the plot. That's my new cool thing that I do. Uh, <laughs> saves, I, me, I, saves me a lot of time. <laughs> so you're no better than those people who argue with me about comic books who've read the Wikipedia. Uh, yes. True. <laughs> okay. Um, somebody in the chat said, am I going to play this? Yes. I, I'll do like a playthrough. I, you could beat it really quickly. Uh, Goldeneye. If you know, yeah, it's, if you know the game. Yeah. If you played it before, you can play power. <laughs> it's out. not a long game. It can be a difficult game depending on what setting you have it on. Right. Um, but if you know the ins and outs of it, and if you play it with a good controller, I think you'll be, uh, 
I was gonna say, I wonder what the controls are gonna be. Like, like well, I hope, I hope you can. Uh, I hope they throw a little modernization on there. Did you play Perfect Dark on Xbox 360? No, because they modernized the control scheme in that. They gave you like three or four different options for control mm-hmm. for uh, controlling that game, and they're all of them are dual analog stick. All they need to do is flip the x axis on both of the sticks they just need yeah. to they just need to take it and and put them in the in on the other sticks they're on the wrong so, stick well i'm sure they'll do that in perfect dark they even have two controller layouts one called spartan which emulates the halo mm-hmm. uh style and one called duty calls which emulates the call of duty style you know what's really interesting to me uh, i play a lot of call of duty and mm. i I've, I've also been playing the uh, uh the new halo and the controls are identical. <laughs> really? Yeah, they're the same. They're like I don't, I, I don't know anything that's different. They're like exactly the same. Wow. There's even the longest- there's even a ping button, and the ping button by default is in the same spot. Because for the longest time, Halo had a different control layout because they didn't do a lot of the same things Call of Duty did. It didn't have iron sight yeah. aiming. It had yeah. like a dedicated grenade button, uh, in a different spot. That, well, that's that's the only thing that I can think of that's different. The grenade yeah. button is left uh, bumper instead of yeah. right bumper, but that's also where the tactical grenades are in in Call of Duty. So it's like kind of the yeah. same. Uh, so yeah, it 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 feels it feels no different switching back and forth between Call of Duty and and, and Halo. And, and no, I know that. I mean, back in the day, uh, uh, even for like Xbox 360 games, there were games that had Spartan. Oh, you, like you just you yeah. fucking just said it about about uh. There's another. There's other games that have that control scheme, and they call right, it Spartan. Yeah. Uh, there's other differences. Halo has a, the T bag button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So anyway, yeah, we don't know when uh uh Golden Eyes coming out, but uh. It looks yeah. like it is. It is. It has it been looks, submitted for achievements, and it looks like it's got pictures and stuff. It looks like it's coming. Yes. And I yes. am And hopefully, this will be the HD uh, version that got leaked. Hopefully, like if it's been polished, mm-hmm. and uh, we can get like an official release of it. Because yeah, you can say, oh, it was leaked online already, but how many more people are going to actually buy the game than like go out of their way to try and find the download of it? Right. Uh, we got tech is amazing with a hundred bits. Who said Unbox Therapy did a video on your Switch OLED burning too? That was probably uh before I said that he did that, but yes, I yeah. watched it and I I I appreciate that because I like him very much. Uh, GCXC Luke, thanks for that one whole year of subscriptions. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, so this next one we'll talk about real quick. More Microsoft. Uh, a lot of people wanted us to talk about this. Uh, this happened like yes. right before the podcast was supposed to happen, and then uh, I threw up everywhere, and we couldn't do it. Uh, so a little over a week ago, uh, our buddy MVG, Modern Vintage Gamer, made a video uh, talking about how the developer mode on Xbox, you can pay like 20 or 25 bucks to unlock it, it allows you to put emulators and stuff on your Xbox very easily. I have a video on that too. Uh, Modern Vintage Gamer uh, found out that uh, apparently if you have been inactive in your developer account, meaning if you haven't uploaded a game to the store in 90 days, which most people have not because they were just buying the developer stuff to put freaking emulators on their console. If you haven't been using your Xbox as a developer, Microsoft was banning you and removing your develop, not banning you, removing your development access. Uh, so that's kind of a big deal. It, it means that if you bought your Series S or X in order to put emulators on it, you can't do it anymore. Also, if you're a developer that uh, is making a game and you haven't made the game within 90 days, you all of a sudden don't have developer access anymore. Um, so that's a big deal. But don't worry, Microsoft clapped back and was like, "Hey, man, that was a mistake. We didn't mean to. We didn't mean to do that." Uh, we got Jason Ronald here, uh, who is the uh, director of partner management of Microsoft. 
He says, we have no plans to remove or disable developer mode on Xbox consoles. We continue to believe in and support a healthy independent app and game development community on Xbox. As part of a regularly scheduled maintenance to clean up inactive accounts, a number of partner center accounts used to enable developer mode on Xbox One and Series X uh, and S consoles were inadvertently deactivated. We are actively working on identifying and re-enabling these accounts. If you need your account right now, you can uh, email report app at microsoft.com and tell them you've been disabled and you want to re-enable it immediately. But they're going to probably fix it, you know, without you needing mm-hmm. to do anything eventually. So uh, Microsoft knows that uh, the reason why their shit hasn't been hacked is because there's no need to. They made it open yeah. and people <laughs> could just pay the 20 bucks and be a developer and do whatever they want anyway. So uh, M- Microsoft for a few days was uh, was pissing everybody off in the developer community <laughs> and, and the emulation community, but everybody got back to it. Uh, people are... Other people have said he's developer of product, uh, director of product management, and uh, it's partner management. It says PM in his in his title, but uh, when I googled his name, it said partner management. Well, either way, he's somebody who works at Microsoft who can answer this question directly. Mm-hmm. What's his link so, say? Oh, there you go. The authority. It on. doesn't. I have to log in. I'm not doing that. Well, last time I looked it up, it's a partner management. He's he's the guy who developers go to. Yes. You know? He doesn't make the products. PM equals perfect man. He is a perfect... Look at his freaking... Look at this man's well, beard. According to Tech Nanner, it means piss master. <laughs> <laughs> this man you, does look like the piss master. You should go to him if you've been doing it wrong. <laughs> Hey, piss master, you ever just miss? <laughs> Teach me. And he's like, no, I'm the piss master. I hope these people never see this fucking podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Poop monkey. All right. Fuck you. Guys. All right. Moving on in PlayStation news. Yes. The second Bob tweeted that the podcast was canceled last week. Sony announced that PlayStation VR 2 is a thing and it is coming eventually. Yeah, there's no pictures or anything, or, or right? It's just no. It's well, just, they show- there's a thing. They're working they, on this thing. They kind of showed the controllers. <laughs> oh, where's the pictures? Uh, probably not in this article. But if you Google PSVR 2 controllers. They kind of look like the um, what the hell? Like dildos. Uh, dildos. Yes, they look like dildos. No, they look like the Oculus controllers almost. Wait, is this it? <laughs> uh, this like black thing looks like the headset. I, mean, I don't. Mm, I don't. I don't think they showed the headset. Well, this is the. That's the regular PSVR. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Royalty. Ima- image credit future. Okay, so that's not real. <laughs> yeah. Uh, royalty Royalty 13 says, no, that's not it. The controller is called the Sense Controllers. Is it these? No, that's... Um, I'm, I I want to die. <laughs> yes, those things. Those are the Sense Controllers. Oh, we saw these a long time ago, actually. Oh, did we? Yeah, these are, these are not oh. new. Well, they showed them again. And they announced new features like uh, visual fidelity for high fidelity visual experience. PSVR 2 offers 4K HDR, 110 degree field of view, and uh, foveated rendering with an OLED display. Players can ex- expect a display resolution of 2000 by 2040 per eye and smooth frame rates of 90 or 120 hertz. That's a lot of resolution. Yeah. Per eye. That's a double. That's crazy. He- Headset-based controller tracking with inside-out tracking. PSVR 2 tracks you and your controller through integrated cameras embedded in the VR headset. Your movements and the direction you look at are reflected in-game without the need for an external camera. 
and eye tracking too. It tracks your eyeball. There you go. Uh, new sensory features. Uh, Sense technology combines eye tracking, headset feedback, 3D audio, and the innovative PSVR to sense controller to create an incredible deep feeling of immersion. Headset feedback is the new is a new sensory feature that amplifies the sensations of in-game actions from the player. It cr it's created by a single built-in motor with vibrations that add an intelligent tactile element bringing players closer to the gameplay experience. For example, gamers can feel a character's elevated pulse during tense moments, the rush of objects passing close to a player's head, or the thrust of a vehicle as the character speeds forward. Additionally, PS PS5's Tempest 3D uh, audio tech makes sounds in the player's surroundings come alive, adding to this new level of immersion. Uh, it says vibration on the headset. I don't know how I feel about that. Well, that's how they they say they're going to do all those things like you can feel something whiz past you, or if you're in a car, like you can you can get the sensation I of like I don't want my head vibrating at all. That's what this is going to lead to is every time you play a first person shooter in VR and you get shot in the head, that thing is going to just rumble. I mean, I want that. I want if I'm playing a shooter and I get shot, I want to feel like I was fucking shot, so I don't want to get shot anymore. <laughs> I, I imagine it's supposed to be a uh, a successor to like what they have in their controllers with mm -hmm. the rumble on the triggers. Yeah. Where, like, yeah. Haptic feedback. Yeah. Uh, so apparently another big deal with this is that it's one cable to go right into the system. Not like the old PlayStation VR, which had like a brick. I mean, I don't know yeah. if this thing's going to have a brick also, but I mean, if they're making a big deal about it being one cable, then it better just be one fucking cable that goes right into yeah, the communication with uh, PS5 just says USB-C. Yeah, so th that that is a big selling point, I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it'd be better if it was wireless, but uh, yes. uh, baby steps. I mean, this thing's <laughs> super high resolution, so it's not going to... Yeah. I still think the best experience right now is the Oculus Quest 2 because it's freaking, it's freaking, uh, it's wireless. Yeah. It's literally, it's just the whole unit is on your face. Like, yeah. and it's tiny and it, and it's not even uncomfortable. Like it's, it's perfect. Yeah. Um, and that's why I was kind of, and also it's a, it's, it's a lot better quality than the, than the original PlayStation VR. Um, yeah. But I'd imagine this is going to be like like a huge leap ahead of that because this is better technology. Yeah. I'd also imagine it's going to be pretty expensive. Yeah. They also announced that uh, the first game for PSVR 2 is going to be Horizon Call of the Mountain. The original oh. game is being built specifically for PSVR 2 and will open the doors for players to go deeper into the world of Horizon. Interesting. Uh, that'll probably be like a small game. Yeah. PlayStation VR doesn't really have that much good stuff. <laughs> if, if no. I'm, if I'm being real. Um, it had a lot of like exclusives in the beginning. Like Resident Evil 7 VR was only on PlayStation VR. Right. Um, I think Doom VR was exclusive to PSVR for a while. It People... made a big... It made a big initial splash. It, it 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 was the most accessible VR could be at the time, and so yeah. I was very grateful for that. It had a lot of good stuff, like like to to try out. Um, but with all of the options now, uh, it's really not that that big of a deal. Yeah. PlayStation VR two has potential to be the most accessible, like high quality one. Right. Uh, so I mean, we'll 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 have to see. Uh, next, we have Square Enix and NFTs. The Square Enix president knows people who play to have fun dislike NFTs, but he wants them anyway. <laughs> so, 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 real quick, last the last time we did a podcast, we talked about yes. NFTs, and I kind of went off about NFTs, uh, and I got uh, I got a DM. Mm -hmm. I re I read almost all of the DMs that I get. I almost never respond to DMs because it's because it opens up the floodgates and it's a pain in the ass. If you want to talk to us, right. the easiest way to do it is just to at us publicly on Twitter because no, yeah. most of the time we will we will see it. Um, our our ads are right at the bottom of the screen right there. Um, but anyway, uh, somebody uh 
uh, DM me a, a diatribe of, of reasons why NFTs could be good for video games. And all of the reasons are things that already exist in video games without <laughs> NFTs. So I, every single one of the reasons he listed, like buying in-game items, like you could just do that or, or, or selling in-game items to other people for real world money. You could already do that. So I, the, I don't know. The one thing I've heard with regards to what you just said mm -hmm. was you can buy an in-game item and the NFT, because it's NFT, you can take it between multiple games. Apparently the guy from Linkin Park said that. <laughs> yes, I remember I him saying I didn't that. know that. I saw the tweet and then I was like, oh, this guy's stupid. And then and then I saw somebody report about it and I was like, oh, wait, that was the guy from Linkin Park? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because the way NFTs are built, it's like they're not really married to a program. They can be integrated in and out well, of program. No, no, it's this. It it okay. Hold, hold, mm. <laughs> uh, it it's 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 just a certificate. This is like you own it. Is is what the yeah. idea of an NFT is. So that's why they they say you can like take it around. It's 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 so that everybody knows you're the guy who owns this thing, no matter what platform you're on. Right. Most people, here's another thing, a little fun fact about NFTs. Most people think the NFT is the thing. So like when you buy a picture of a monkey, most people think that the picture of the monkey is the NFT. It's actually not. The NFT is the hyperlink to the picture of the monkey. So when, so... It's worse than it's every time somebody explains NFTs, the idea gets worse and worse. So like I explained this on stream yesterday too. If you buy an NFT, that's a picture of a monkey, you get the hyperlink to the picture of the monkey. And that's the thing that you bought. It's supposed to be super, it's supposed to be more secure because it's an NFT. NFT is supposed to be super secure and everybody's doing whatever. Yeah. They could anybody whoever you bought it from can just change the picture that's at the end of the hyperlink. So there's potential for the biggest rug pull in the history of the internet where I could sell you an NFT NFT and make it something fucked up on the other side. Now all of a sudden you own and everybody knows that you own that super fucked up thing, if you know what I'm talking about. I can get the FBI on your ass by selling you an NFT. Yeah. So, uh, it, it just, it, it, it doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. And, and putting that into no. video games also doesn't make any sense. You can no. already buy in-game items and, and make them unique to you in that game. You could also right. sell those in-game items to other users without having to put, uh, the, the fucking blockchain behind it. Yeah. So. Anyway, I don't know what this fucking Square Enix idiot is talking about. <laughs> uh, in a wide-ranging New Year's open letter, Square, Square Enix president uh, Yosuke Matsuda has addressed a broad spectrum of technologies from the metaverse to cloud gameplay and AI, but the majority of the letter focuses on his enthusiasm for blockchain tokens. Matsuda did not uh, explicitly say that Square Enix will put NFTs in games, uh, he does say that the company is keeping a close eye on the technology. Most notably, Matsuda acknowledges that a lot of people do not like the idea of tiny, mm -hmm. persistent microtransactions becoming a fundamental part of their games. He says, I realize that some people who play games to have fun and who currently uh, form the majority of players have voiced their reservations towards these new trends, and understandably so. Despite this, he unreservedly he's, he is unreservedly enthusiastic about the idea that token economies will provide those who play to contribute with an explicit incentive beyond such inconsistent personal feelings as goodwill and volunteer spirit. In short, Matsuda sees the creative contributions and user-generated content of gaming communities as something that's insufficiently systematized and presumably monetized. Yeah, they're just trying to find a way to make a buck. It's like this is no. Yeah, it's, 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 it's basically you can, you can put flowery language on it, but there's no. Yeah, you're just you're just trying to make some money. It does it? It's it's yeah. Uh, you don't gotta you don't gotta make a whole thing about it. 
And what sucks is like for every one game studio that like is backing away from the NFT game, like uh, the people who are making Stalker, there's more bigger studios like Square, like Ubisoft, like I think even EA, who are like really committed to this idea and really looking into like how to integrate it into their games. And that's that's bothersome. Um, so, so it's it's the big companies who like already charge you an arm and a leg for stupid shit, right? Uh, and it's so, well, just a few years ago, we were on our parents' couch complaining about how uh, loot boxes were a problem and and in game items yeah. were a problem. <laughs> and now here we are talking about how adding crypto on top of that is making it uh, yeah. uh, uh, kind of a mess. Um, to be fair, I don't really have a problem with in-game items. It's it's uh, unless uh, if they're cosmetic, you know, if they're cosmetic, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Um, it's mostly like the exploitative nature of it, like, you know, hiding things behind in-game purchases or like right. things that would make the game better. Right. That could have been, that should have been implemented from the beginning, you know. Uh, so I found the DM. <laughs> okay. Um, if developers were to make, uh, oh, for, for he's first, it can't be an NFT if it's not on the blockchain. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Why does it got to be on the blockchain? <laughs> also, if game developers were to make items and skins in games into NFTs, if you bought or earned an NFT skin in a game, you could trade or even sell that NFT to on any open marketplace. Uh, you can't sell it on any open marketplace. It has to be like an NFT marketplace. And, and it has to be... It's still proprietary to the game. So why not? Well, no, that the thing about and like I was saying before, the thing about NFTs, the potential is that you can transfer it between games, like from game to game. That that's not even Mike Shinoda's dumbass idea. <laughs> that's not a thing that could actually happen because the developer has to program it for the game. You can't just put it. Well, wherever. they have to program the ability for it to read the NFT certificate. No, 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 not the NFT certificate. They have to program it to be able to have the model of whatever the thing is to put in the game. You can't just put a thing in a game. Well, if it, everything's going to run on Unreal Engine 5, <laughs> then, then yeah, then yeah. Then yeah. <laughs> if everything ran on Unreal Engine 5, then yes. Um, and it looks like everything is going to run on Unreal 5. <laughs> Uh, if you bought an NFT skin in a game, you could trade or even sell that NFT on any open marketplace. If you bought, if you bought or earned a skin in CS:GO, there are websites where you can buy and sell it. That's the, it's the same fucking thing. It's the same yeah. thing. And there's nothing stopping a developer from making from making the digital good available on any open marketplace. There's nothing stopping them. Um. So you potentially could make money for playing your favorite game. You could already do that in some games. Also, the developer could make it so every time one of their NFTs are sold, they receive a percentage of the sale. You could, uh, I mean, you could also just do that on on uh, fucking on, on anything. Um, now, a developer could do this in a game without NFTs, yes, but then they would have to develop the systems for it, yes, and you wouldn't be able to pull it out of the game and to sell, you would, no, they do that already with CSGO. You would have to sell it in the developer system. They already do that, and they do it with Roblox, too. Roblox is, like, the biggest, right now, yeah. a, a gaming economy, like, in-game, Roblox has, like, the biggest in-game economy right now for, like, real-world money, and it's a huge fucking problem, apparently, because little kids play that game. <laughs> Um, so no, NFTs are a hype word. It doesn't, it's stupid. It, there's no reason for it. Yeah. The original point purpose of NFTs was to, was for a way for artists to be able to make money off of their content in the digital mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. that has been perverted and manipulated, of uh, by the corporations, man, in order <laughs> for them to make a quick buck selling you garbage or uh, not even selling because sometimes they just give them to you for free for just giving you garbage. Uh, I'm cutting. I cut a couple stories. We're moving on. Mario Kart 9's okay. coming. Woo. This is not a Woo. big deal. And here's why. 
everybody knows that they're always working on a Mario Kart game. Of course they're working on a Mario Kart 9. The thing with this one is the the twist that yeah. Uh Let me let me see if I'll... There's a the weird, twisting. there's a weird sort of like, sort of like a bro competition between uh, leakers and like journalists and stuff. Yeah, they they all like compete. And when, when this guy leaked this, that they're working on Mario Kart Nine, these other leakers were like, were like, Psh, I knew that. I just didn't say anything. It's like, yeah, everybody fucking knew it, dude. Of course yeah. they're working on Mario Kart Nine. Anybody could have just guessed this. Uh, speaking with GI.biz, uh, Dr. Sirkan Toto said that while Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is still selling very well, Mario Kart 9 is in active development and comes with a new twist. Doesn't say what the twist is. Uh, yeah, they did, actually. Uh, hold on. They did? They, they, they did, yeah. I have it right here. Uh, it says... Uh... Uh, according to VG247, Mario Kart 9 in active development will feature a new twist. Anal. It's cut off. It's cut off. It's just like uh, analysis. Yes, yes. I, I, I saw that. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, of course. The only thing that's like newsworthy, I guess, is the new twist part, but I mean, don't they do that with every Mario Kart game? More or like less, yeah. I I did see one some people think the twist is that it's not going to be Mario specific. It's going to be Nintendo as a whole. So like Smash uh, Brothers, but with kart racing. What would they call that? I guess they could still Super Smash Kart. <laughs> there were people who, uh, I mean, I saw like a Twitter thread of somebody who was upset about that idea. Yeah. About adding other IPs. But Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has a lot of other Nintendo characters in it. It's it has Zelda. Link in it. Uh, the Inklings yeah. and the Animal Crossing characters. Uh, the arcade game has Pac-Man in it. Yeah, Have you ever played Mario Kart in the arcade? Yeah. So yeah, that's there's potential for that too. Yeah, that makes sense. Mario Kart Nine, everyone's here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they proved it successful with with uh with Smash Brothers. Uh, I'm moving on real quick. We got to pop right. through these stories. Uh, this one we got to talk about real quick because how come nobody told me about this? I'm surprised nobody told you about this. I'm like the guy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Turns out the Nintendo Game Boy is the worst possible way to watch movies. Hey! <laughs> hey, they're directly attacking me in this article. Um, well, to this be dude, fair, this dude put Star Wars on on his Game Boy, on his original Game Boy. On a, uh, specifically his original DMG Green Game Boy. Video game consoles have evolved into multi multi purpose entertainment hubs, letting gamers stream movies, chat with friends, and do far more than just play games. The 32 year old Game Boy, by comparison, was strictly a game machine, at least until Sebastian Stax found a way to expand its capabilities, including turning it into the worst possible way to watch movies. If your gaming pedigree dates back to Nintendo's earlier handheld consoles, you probably remember that the color screen of the Game Boy Advance... Oh my god, just tell me what happened. The Game Boy was powered by a sharp... I don't care. Last month, Stax shared a post on... This is the last paragraph of the article, by the way. The last month, Stax shared a post on their personal blog detailing how they successfully built a Wi-Fi Game Boy cartridge that re relied on a wireless... Oh, I actually did see this. Um, wireless microchip in addition to several other components attached to a custom PCB. The cartridge, the cartridge's capabilities are severely limited by the Game Boy's processor. You can't use it to download playable ROM files from a cloud server, for example, but Stack's earliest demonstrations include using Telnet to send and receive simple text messages and using a basic on-screen keyboard to access and display Wikipedia articles. As impressive as it is to see a Game Boy with wireless internet access, accessing Wikipedia isn't terribly exciting, so Stax came up with another use for the wireless cartridge that's far more interesting. Oh, that was not the last paragraph. <laughs> Stax has promised a longer video explaining all the details later on, but uh, on Twitter last week they shared a short video of an original unmodded Game Boy using the custom Wi-Fi cartridge to stream Star Wars at 160 by 144 pixels. 
20 frames a second. 20 frames a second. That's more frames than uh, Tenant <laughs> was running on my Game Boy Advance. Um, but yeah, it's 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 streaming to his Game Boy on this cartridge. Yeah. I didn't even like it. I didn't even like it on Twitter. That's crazy. <laughs> um, so yeah, there you go. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I th- uh, you said you were gonna try Dune next, right? <laughs> yeah, on a Game Boy Color, which yeah. is, which has to be a PNG sequence. I, I, oh, it's God. gonna be, a, it's gonna be a lot of work. <laughs> That's why yeah. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> Last thing we have here is this app that I need to try and also didn't know about. Yes, it, uh, it makes it easier to to get your your shared pictures on your on, from off of your Switch. Did I download this? I don't even remember if I downloaded it, and I'm the one who put it in the keep. It's called Switch Buddy. Switch Buddy is an app that makes it much easier to transfer screenshots and videos from your Nintendo Switch to your mobile phone. Created by Czech developer Philip Nemekic, nailed it, nailed and it. available for both Apple and Android devices, the mobile app helps to speed up the way Switch players can export images from the console. According to a press release, uh, Nemekic, nailed it, says that he decided to create the app after becoming frustrated by the clumsy process involved in transferring images from the Switch to the phone. A uh, Nintendo handheld that does have its own process, blah blah blah. Yes, you all, we all know we all know how it's done. Um, although Switch Buddy isn't an all-out game changer, it does help to make the whole process less of a headache. After downloading the app, players will still need to scan a QR code in order to access their screenshot, but you are then shown every screenshot and video on your Switch, which uh, with users prompted to select everything they want to transfer. In addition to allowing users to save images directly to their devices, the iOS version comes with added functionality that lets you transfer screenshots straight to an iCloud account instead. That, okay, so it doesn't remove any steps, really, unless you want to do bulk stuff. Like if you you want a bunch of it, uh, then it makes it a lot easier. Uh, Otherwise, you still have to scan the QR code, so it's kind of stupid, but... uh... I mean, you have to scan the QR code, but it it like it presents it in a in a much nicer package right. overall. I think. Yeah, and then you get access to like if if you want to do more than one, this yeah. seems like it's way easier to do that. Uh, so that's that's great. I did run into this problem when I was doing the freaking uh eighteen hour OLED switch video because uh, yeah. I had to transfer screenshots from one switch to another, and that. Uh, well, I guess I, I just put it on the same. I just put it on another micro SD card. It really wasn't that big. Of a yeah. Deal. But uh, putting a micro SD card in a switch is a fucking, is a fucking <laughs> nightmare, because it always has to format it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's cool. It's called Switch Buddy. Check it out. Yeah. On your download on it now. It's free. Thing. It's free. This is not an ad. All right. That's all the news. Hooray! Well, it's not all the news, but it's all the news that's fit to print for today. <laughs> it's all the news that has ever happened. Nothing else happened this week uh, in the whole rest of the world. Uh, except for except for the Tweet of the Week. Tweet of the Week! Tweet of the Week! Tweet of the Week! Uh, I have two. It's like a series. Oh, boy. Uh, this one, it's a little meme that's been going around. This is by Silent Dawn LB. Kramer, what's going on in there? <laughs> one of us is the thing, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> People have been doing this. Uh, it's it's from I think it's from the uh, the, the 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 chicken episode. What is it? What the is Kenny it? Rogers chicken episode. Yes. Of Seinfeld. Yes. 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 Which I mentioned uh, in my 18-hour OLED Swiss video. <laughs> because Kramer has like a big red light coming out of his room because he lives across yeah. the street from a from a Kenny Rogers chicken. Kenny Rogers. Yeah. Uh, uh, so people have just uh, been taking this sequence and in the middle adding a random movie or show or something. It, uh, it, I've been finding them hysterical and I'm surprised that, you know, all of a sudden, like over the weekend, everyone decided we should make this a meme. 
<laughs> here's another one that's the that's the uh, 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 steamed hams. Kramer, what's going on in there? Aurora Borealis. <laughs> And the other one that I had linked was uh, this one. Kramer, what's going on in there? And it's the Matrix. And he goes, I'm the one. I think I'm the one, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> we like that. Those are good. Those yeah. are solid. Uh, anyway. Oh, there's more things that we need to talk to to, to you guys about. 100 bits from Big uh, Bobby Big brush who says two things doesn't steam already do this kind of thing with their shit meaning nfts and also mm -hmm. each game would have to be crazy modded or upgraded or uh, upgraded in order to do anything like what this guy is saying that is absurd also in order for an nft to work it needs to be on a blockchain that's just how it works unfortunately i mean the, yeah yeah but like that doesn't add any value I mean, the value is that crypto is worth money, but yeah. you're paying that. So, like, no, blockchain doesn't do anything different than what's already been done. People say uh, it makes it more secure or more traceable or whatever, but that doesn't mean you can't just do that. Yeah. I mean, I guess the argument is that the development has already been there, but who's to say that this is, like, the best way to do it? Also, it's not more secure because, as I just said, the NFT is just the hyperlink. So, like, people could just fucking do whatever they want with the thing that they just gave you. Yeah. Anyway. I I saw recently, like, some photographer on Instagram was, like, said that they were selling their artwork as NFTs. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, you're using this correctly. And nobody is giving you a fair shake at that. <laughs> yeah. Like, all I the comments were mad at them. When NFTs came out, I was like, this makes sense. Like and like Beeple and, and, and stuff like that. Like Beeple, uh it was a good way for a digital artist to make money selling their art. And I was like, that's that's a that's pretty sweet. Yeah. And then everybody tried to capitalize on it. And now people are getting their art stolen and being made into NFTs. So like yeah. it completely the purpose of it has been completely lost. Uh, CJ Gray Gabriel with 11 months says 13 months. Oh, I'm sorry. It's 13 months total. Oops. 13 Ooh. months. Thank you. Nice. CJ for the 13 months. I appreciate it. Now we'll talk to you people real quick, starting with last two, three weeks two ago. Two weeks ago. Uh, whoops. Uh, the New Year's episode. The one where Bob got COVID. <laughs> where the fuck am I going? I, here it is. All right. The one where Bob got COVID. Yes, uh, that was so long ago. Happy New Year. Oh, that's from Fred. Thank you. Uh, Muhammad Hader says, uh, oh, Bob and I got COVID at the same time. I'm sorry. I hope you're better now. I'm yeah. better now. Uh, Rin Kashi Kashi says, if they are getting Gex, it is a matter of time. When we get Knack 3, baby, Knack is back. I don't know about I mean. That. Gex is a different company. Knack is a Sony first party exclusive. Uh, Gex, I believe, is Crystal Dynamics, which is owned by Square now. So I don't know. Unless Sony hires Crystal Dynamics to make Na uh, a new Gex game, nobody when they're wants, not when they're not too busy <laughs> when they're not too busy screwing up Avengers. I was gonna boot up that game because I finished the story mode. I was gonna boot it up. And I was going to trudge through. The We're talking about yeah. Avengers. Okay. <laughs> yes, Avengers. I finished Avengers. I was going to boot up the game again and trudge through the DLC because they're short. And I've heard the Black Panther expansion is very good. Every time I boot up my PS4, that fucking game needs an update. Mm -hmm. And it's and like this one was like wouldn't be done for like an hour. And it was like eight o'clock at night, and I just wanted to play a game. So I said, "Fuck this! I'm officially done with this game." I'm gonna play I am Nack. going to play. I'm going to play Miles Morales instead. Oh, okay. Such a better time playing Miles Morales. <laughs> that is oh a better God. game. <laughs> In like two hours, that's giving me so much more enjoyment and excitement than twenty plus or whatever the fuck I was playing Avengers for. Like Jesus Christ! Like I know making video games is hard, but it can't be that hard. <laughs> can't be that. I'll do it. I'll make this game better. Give me a give me a book uh, on C plus plus. Yeah. It out. 
Uh, Becca Mullen says, Bob, you are the best at telling stories. Thanks. Our mother would disagree. You're going, you're doing okay, and both of you, hope you're doing okay, and both of you have a good Christmas, as as good of a Christmas as possible. Thank you for everything. Well, thank you, Becca. We had a good thank Christmas, you. even though it I was, was uh, yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah, how was that? I wasn't there. <laughs> it was good. It was fine. We all got together. We ate dinner. Uh, we watched uh, the little one play in her little Batmobile car that my parents got her, not me. So it was, it was fun. <laughs> I spent it in, uh, I think, in VR chat or playing Call of Duty or something. <laughs> anyway, uh, Sean Brent says the intro alone is worth a like. What did we do? Oh, you were freaking all, all, p. Uh, uh, what do you call it? You were all done up with, uh, with, with your mask. And oh, your with my yes. Whatnot. PPE. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. Yes. And Fred says, thanks for that glowing review of my home state. Can't wait for the tourism boom this brings. That's because I shit on Rhode Island, I think. Yes. Which I'm going to tomorrow. So wish me luck, everybody. Good luck. Um, I'm sur- uh, Maybe Fred's just trying to shield us from the bad comments, but I feel like we. I was expecting a lot more uh, people uh, uh, saying some anti-vax dumb shit. Not our audience. Couldn't be our audience. That's the thing. Like our audience here on the Twitch chat, great people. Once we put it on YouTube, the riffraff comes in. Look out. It got shared too much, and then this gets all weird. (laughs) I'm I'm surprised we we didn't get anyone, because we were talking about pee a lot this episode. I'm surprised we didn't get anyone saying, you know, if you drink your pee, that'll cure COVID. (laughs) I did see a good tweet. Speaking of drinking your own pee, I saw a great tweet today. Let's bring that up. Oh, Uh, 2020, I don't know what's going to happen, but I feel like soon we will have it under control. 2022, drink your piss. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're going through a lot of people's fetishes this week. Yes. We're back, baby. We're back. 2022. This will be our year, folks. This will be our year. Anyway, we're in the chat now. Make it quick. We gotta. I gotta pee. Yeah, and get food Unders- before everything closes around here. Underscore. Was it Hulk Hogan? No, Hulk Hogan uh, is one of those people who thinks Betty White died from getting the booster shot. Oh, brother! Cool. Very, very pog. Very cool. Do you know what poggers oh, is? Did, did, did we tell you what poggers is? No, but I feel like I should know that. You should know that you're on Twitch. Yeah. You don't know what poggers is. I've heard that before. Like, that's so pog? No. A pog <laughs> is a little is a little cardboard disc about this big <laughs> that has cool little pictures on it. Pogs were the, the analog NFTs, my friends. You're such a boomer. I yeah, I am I am all like a bad knees. So pog is is pog champ. Do you know pog champ? Yes, I've um, I've heard of PogChamp. That's that emote that turned that turned out to be uh, from a racist, guy yeah. who was a racist. So they so they made that uh, uh, uh not him anymore. But yeah. uh, it, it's look at the chat. It's it's like oh shit, like that's that's crazy. Mm-hmm. So like if something's Pog, like oh that's awesome. Okay, that's what that's what that's what it is. Got it. Yeah, you see the PogChamps and that's what that's what. That's yes. what it, now that's now like, I I am. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Okay. So that's that's your that's your uh, uh, Zoomer uh, uh, word of the day. Will I? I maybe we'll, maybe to... we'll make a new we'll make a new uh, uh, marquee or or a new stinger for for a Zoomer word of the day. Next, we'll do bussin. <laughs> and when this is over, I'm gonna go do ten. Get off my lawns. <laughs> Is Will watching Superman and Lois? What? I am behind, but I enjoyed what I have seen of that show. It is a very good show. I didn't know it, it is, was a show. It is a show. It is It is the modern Superman we've wanted, not the one we thought we want and then got, and the people still insist we want. So it's basically Lois and Clark. <laughs> yes, but not campy. <laughs> All right. Uh, did you guys watch Hawkeye? Did you finish Hawkeye? Never touched it. You didn't touch it? Nope. Oh, you should. It's excellent. I've seen one episode of of uh, uh, not the Mandalorian, but but the Mandalorian. 
<laughs> What's it called? Boba Fett. Boba Fett. The, that Boba Fett guy. I've seen yeah, one episode. Book of, of Boba Fett. I gotta watch the other episode. Yeah, you sh- you should watch Hawkeye though. It's it's only like six episodes, so you can get I, it done. In the I day. do want to see it. Yeah, it's very. I good. also is- want to see Spider Man this weekend. <laughs> I am still looking for a bootleg of that. So if anyone has a non-cam version, let me know. I, uh, I, a, a week ago, um, article, uh, uh, these websites just gave up and started just posting spoilers as titles and stuff. Yeah. And I tweeted like, oh, I guess we're just letting all that fly today. And people yep. were like, Psh, your fault for not seeing it. I'm sorry. I had fucking COVID. It's for yeah. the second it came out, I had COVID. And that they 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 kind of it was it had been two weeks since then, right when they when they started uh, doing all the shit about it. So, fucking sorry, guys, I couldn't yeah. go see it. Sorry that they released it right when it started surging again. <laughs> also, once again, I'm not saying they can't do that. I'm just saying I I wish I didn't see it because <laughs> I fucking wanted I wanted to see the damn movie. Yeah. Uh I'm allowed to express uh, uh my feelings, okay? Don't hate me guys, Euphoria, like the show? Why would we hate you? I do not watch Euphoria. That is that is too young for me. I don't watch anything. That's just going to give me boomer rage at all the zoomer lingo that's going on in there. Oh shit. Underscore says there's another book of Boba Fett coming out. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow's episode three. Son of a bitch. I'm so behind. Yeah. I'm gonna be yeah. working until like three in the morning. So Okay. Uh anything else in here that you guys uh, want us to read? Because we got I, well because we meaning I gotta pee. I gotta pee too. Oh my god, wow. wow. Bob, what do you Hope. think of the analysis are looking to the future of Nintendo's next generation system passing on the idea of a revision and that the Switch's successor will be coming in early 2025? Oh, hey, it's our it's our buddy. Uh, I have no idea anything about this. I think we could see a revision of the Switch as early as next year. 2023. Yeah, that- that sounds possible, but if this year is going to be like, if this year is going to be the biggest year of the Switch, then we then maybe twenty twenty four, even. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah. I don't. I honestly, I don't think they're gonna. Wait, what do you mean passing on the? Oh no. Of course, I don't think that they're making a Switch Pro. They're not doing a revision of the Switch anymore. Well, the OLED is the revision that we're getting. I think the next Switch is going to be the same idea. The switch, the little docking and undocking thing that everybody loves so much, just a just a better version of it that plays better games. It will be the switch too. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, whatever um, they wind up calling it. Early twenty twenty five sounds like like a like a like a very good bet. Yeah, I think it could be as early as twenty twenty four though. Uh, Will, what is a good Marvel comic event? Event? God. Uh, the original Infinity Gauntlet was very good, and it's self-contained. It's just that trade you need. People will tell you Civil War, but Civil War is not as good as the movie was, I and think- it, it it has a lot of, like, crap, like, uh, spin-off crap that you need to read in order for a lot of it to make sense. True. So, yeah, the I would book, say check- the, the graphic novel of Civil War t- puts some of the other comics just in there randomly. I think not. Not even the one I have doesn't. And there are parts of that where, like, you needed to have read the spinoffs in order to understand what the hell is going on. Mm-hmm. So that's the problem with a lot of event books is they'll take just the main series. And bundle that together, and that's and that's it. You'll you'll be left to fight for looking for the other stuff. Mm. So, but I would say Infinity Gauntlet is a good of uh, Marvel Comics event because that's self-contained and it's 
its own thing. Um, be wary of Spider-Man and X-Men events, because those very often don't make sense. <laughs> yeah, Marvel's not really good with the events. <laughs> no. I mean, they make they big put, events, but they're really not that great. They, they put more events out than DC does. Mm-hmm. And it's like, boggles my mind why they keep doing that. <laughs> like, stop it. Nobody likes this. All right. I got to pee. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. I'm not going to stream for like a whole week. <laughs> so I'll probably see you for the next podcast. Uh, yeah, that's probably going to be it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to stream next Monday. Um, but I'll see you next week. There'll also be a video on youtube.com slash wolf den. Uh, right now, we haven't rated Miss Click in a while. Go say hello to Miss Click. Uh, she's playing the original halo <laughs> Ooh. so say hello to her say hi in the chat please it helps us out and it helps their channel just by just saying hi in the chat just go over there and write hi and that's it uh thank you very much we'll see you later goodbye bye